now, Chad, tell us a bit about Project Drawdown for those who haven't heard of it and the really comprehensive solutions you all have come up with. Well, first, let me thank you for having me here today. I've been watching this program for all five hours. That's a fact. <laughs> Wonderful job, fantastic. And one of our solutions called Telepresence. So really happy to be here today. So what, what does Drawdown actually mean uh, as a starting point? Drawdown is that point in time when atmospheric concentrations of greenhouse gases begin to decline on a year to year basis. It's that point when we take out more greenhouse gases than we're putting in to Earth's atmosphere. And uh, it may sound really daunting, it may sound impossible, but as we've heard throughout the day, there are many solutions that exist today, real workable technologies and practices that when taken together as a system of solutions can not only achieve drawdown, but also a cascading series of benefit that help human and planetary well-being. And it is not only possible to achieve this, it is actually plausible because these solutions are tangible, they exist. You can imagine going out and touching them, feeling them, seeing them. You don't have to imagine some future silver bullet to come along to save the day because it's not gonna happen. That's not one silver bullet or a buckshot of silver bullets. We have 76 to 100 solutions that can be applied today at global scale that are already being implemented that can do things like uh, uh, usher in a renewable energy future that allows for clean, abundant access to energy for all. We have plant-rich diets and reduced food waste that result in enough food and sustenance for the world's population. We have solutions like regenerative agriculture, silvopasture, tropical staple crops that bring carbon back to the land, restore soil health productivity, and benefit farmers across the board. We have solutions like protecting our forests, protecting our wetlands, right? And what do these do? These protect biodiversity, protect life on this planet, protect our ocean ecosystems, our land ecosystems, and have a direct impact on drawing down carbon every year through a process we all know called photosynthesis. And there are solutions like family planning and education, universal access to uh, quality education for boys and girls, and for access to reproductive health clinics, contraception, and freedom of choice devoid of persecution can be a climate solution, but first and foremost, it's a solution for human rights, gender equity, and economic improvement. And for those of you who are interested in the profit question, guess what? The return on the investment of this system of solutions is three times what we put into it. So these are really win for all solutions. They touch upon every aspect of human activity from energy systems that address buildings, transportation, and how we produce energy to our food systems and our agricultural production and what we consume on a daily basis to our basic human rights that have an effect on, uh, on human and planetary well-being. So taken as a system as a whole, we can achieve drawdown and a whole series of other benefits and push forward to the future that we actually want today. Thank you. And one of the themes that I heard all of you mention, I think, and has really been a common theme throughout the event is that a lot of these solutions do exist, that there's really just, we need a will, we need to be able to implement them. And I see you all nodding. And I think that that really connects to a lot of what our audience is probably asking, because it's something that we get asked a lot at Earth the Initiative, where it's what next then? What do I do? Like, how do I actually implement this? And one thing that I hear a lot is voting. And it's something that a lot of organizations like ours really emphasize. But can we just go around quickly? We don't have a ton of time left, but a real quick thing with each of you that what's the one thing? It could be a policy that you should support. It's some group you should get involved in. It's something you could do in your own life that's very close and personal to you. Just one thing, a real popcorn around here super quickly. Maybe Leah, I want to start with you? Sure. So I always talk about how getting involved politically is the most important thing. Joining an organization, talking about climate change, voting, if you're legally allowed to vote in this country. For example, I am not. I'm not a citizen. Um, but for those of you who can, do that. Do those things. Give money to politicians. But 
just to break my normal thing, I'm going to do a personal thing that you can do in your lives, which is you can lean into this electrification that I've been talking about. You can retrofit your own home. You can get um, the gas out of your home by moving to an electric furnace, for example. You can also get it out of your car by moving to an electric vehicle. So think about where fossil fuels are being burned in your own home and think about how you could electrify your own home. If you own one, that is. And Jeffrey. I would say, if, if you're fortunate enough to have a job, start where you work. Um, every office is an opportunity to be more efficient and to reduce energy use. And, there, and I think that there are statistics showing that 80% of all of the energy that's used in buildings is wasted. So start with your office, start with your employer. Great, and Jonathan? You know what? I'm gonna expand that and just say start. So, and you know, every one of us can be an organizer. Uh, it's amazing, you know, we had somebody in our office who has organized us all to um, collect our organic, organic waste and compost it. Um, so number one, think about starting and organizing, and then I really wanna reinforce the do it in your own home. It's, uh, you know, whether you rent uh, or buy, or, you know, you can set your thermostat lower, you can caulk around your windows. These things are, so you can use LED lights, you can turn off the lights when you leave your room. We calculated, that you, there is a gigaton of savings that would happen if every American simply lowered the thermostat a couple of degrees, ate meat one week, one meal less a week, uh, uh, drove just a little bit less. Is just these little things you do um, can add up enormously. Yeah, and, and, you, and the last thing, when you do it, yeah. it models for everybody else. Great, and Chad. Um, I would say there's a lot I could say, but I, I would say follow your passion because there are solutions in everyday things that we're doing. Just as Jonathan was saying and Jeffrey and Leah, there are many solutions out there that touch upon everything that we do and they're a benefit to us as individuals and us to our communities and to our society. So find what you're passionate about and find the solutions in what you're doing every single day because they're there. Um, I'll give, I have time to give a little quick anecdote. I gave a talk in the Netherlands recently um, and there was a protest going outside from farmers who were coming to protest and a policy coming out there. I had somebody in my audience say, what is it that we can do to bring them into the discussion? I said, let's go talk to them. And when we started talking to them and I opened up our book, Drawdown, um, we found that they were actually practicing managed grazing and civil pasture on their farm in the Netherlands. And the smile on their face when they realized that they were actually practicing a solution to climate it changed their life uh, entirely. I'm gonna go visit that farm next time uh, this COVID crisis is over. I already have plans for it. We need to find the solutions and the things that we do every single day because they're there. And we need to take uh, pride and honor in what we're doing and then see what else we can do as part of a community. Well, thank you everyone. That's all the time that we have. Um, this was really interesting. I think it hit on a lot of themes that we've been hearing throughout this, but got a bit more concrete with it. And I hope that people can take those action items and go forward into their own lives.